And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. It's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a game that's in one of my favorite genres of games. Uh, it's basically classic card games, but this is going to be a climbing card game. Uh, there are several of these out on the market. This one is a new one from North Star Games called Clubs for two to six players. Uh, it's going to play pretty quickly, and the objective here is to score points by either going out first, getting rid of all of your cards, or by collecting clubs and getting points that way. So real quick, we'll see what you get inside of this box and how it plays, and then we'll come back here and we'll get my final opinions on clubs. So here you can see the components for clubs. Now this is basically a climbing game, and it's going to be a simpler climbing game than Teach You, for example, if you played something like that. Uh, but this game comes with 60 card deck. Uh, it's going to be a one through a 15 in four different suits. You have hearts, diamonds, of course, clubs, and spades. A um, little bit of a nice feature, you can see that there's a number of hearts on these cards, or little hearts, equal to the number of the cards. So there's one heart here, or there's going to be ten small diamonds on this diamond card. Just kind of a cool artwork thing to mention. Now, in addition to that, you're going to have these bonus cards. Um, depending on how many players there are in the game, you're going to uh, have more or less of these bonus cards. If there's six players, you're going to use all of them. If there's five players, you're going to use all but the twelve, and so forth and so on down the line. So. What's going to happen here is that at the start of each round, you're going to shuffle these cards up, uh, and you are going to deal them out. Now, uh, with most games like this, you're going to deal out the whole deck. Club says that you're going to deal out 10 cards to each player, no matter how many players there are in the game. So, in a six-player game, the whole deck is going to get dealt out. Each player is going to have 10 cards. In a less-player game, you're going to actually set some cards outside of the game, uh, and... I don't know if I agree with that. I think I'd just deal out all of the cards all the time in order to decrease the randomness uh, or show what cards are removed. But either way, the rules are you deal out 10 cards to each player. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this is my hand. Now, uh, whoever dealt leads in this case. Uh, and you're going to lead cards from your hand. Uh, and the way you can play cards are one of two different ways. You can either play sets, meaning pairs, three of a kinds, four of a kinds, or a single card. That would be a set of one. Or you can play runs, which is going to be at least two cards consecutive. For example, something like 3-4. Now, the way this works is that the player after you now has to follow in the exact same combination of cards. So, for example, they could play 4-5, or they could play 7-8, or jack-queen, doesn't matter. But they'd have to play a two-card set that is higher than this, or they can choose to pass. Now, if they pass, it's the next player's turn, and that player has a chance to beat your, your run. Uh, and then if they pass or they play, the player has a chance to either beat theirs or pass, and consecutively until everyone passes in order except for the player who is currently leading the trick. And that player is going to take those cards, all of them that have been played, uh, and they are going to put them into their own score pile. Now, in this game, the only things that are worth any points are clubs. So you'll see here that this club, seeing it says it's a low club, is worth four points. The higher the club, the less points it's going to be worth because higher clubs are easier to take, lower clubs are harder to take. So if you have something like this, and it could have been a longer run, you could have, uh, for example, six, seven, eight, if you wanted to play a three card run, then the next player would have to play a three card run in order to beat that. Or if you wanted to, you could play sets of cards. For example, a pair of 15s. Now 15s are hard to beat, so a pair of 15s would be good no one would be able to beat this, uh, and these cards would just simply be taken and put into your score pile. But let's say it were a pair of 14s, someone could beat this with a pair of 15s, uh, and basically they would win the trick and take the cards for themselves. Now the real goal of most climbing games, and this climbing game is no exception, is to be the first player to get rid of all of your cards. So you're going to want to try and plan out as best as you can how to use the cards in your hand in order to go out, being the first person to void yourself of all of the cards in your hand. So uh, maybe you have a long run. I have a 2, 3, 4 here. I don't have a 5, but that 2, 3, 4 is probably used best in a run. So maybe I would lead the 2, 3, 4 uh, and hope that it gets back around to I me. Mean, maybe somebody plays a 4, 5, 6. Uh, but I happen to have a 6, 7, 8. So if they play that 4, 5, 6, I can play my 6, 7, 8. And now I'm down 6 cards. Uh, and then if I get the lead back, I'd probably play, play my pair of 15s. That's good. I know no one can beat a pair of 15s. And then I play 11, 12, and I'm out. So that'd be a pretty good hand to start with. Now, if you're the first person to go out, you're going to take the top card of this bonus stack. And that's going to be 12 points at the end of the round. The next person to go out would get 10. The next would get 8 down to five, two, and the last person with cards left is going to get no bonus points. 
In addition to these points, you're going to add up the points that you had from clubs and tricks that you won. So if I had managed to pull down only this three of clubs, I'd get four more points in addition to my 12 if I was the first to go out, and I would have 16 points. And you'd record those points, and over the series of the game, you're going to be trying to get to 50 points first, the first person to 50 points being the winner. Now, there is a little, couple extra rules. The first is that before you play any cards, if you think you have a great hand, for example, this player, if they were the dealer, has a pretty good hand. They could call double or nothing. In this case, if they are the first player to go out, they're going to get double the points for everything that they have. So they'd get this 12 times 2 is 24, plus the club that they had was 4 times 8 is 32 points in one hand. And that would obviously be a significant contribution towards winning the game and getting to 50 points. There are also some variant options that are included in the game. They say that you can make 15s wild, which means the 15 could take the place of any other card, which of course makes things a little more interesting because you can make longer sets out of things. Another option they have is to play what's called crazy clubs, which I think is actually probably a better variant of this game. The idea in crazy clubs is that you can always play a longer or larger set of something or run in order to beat something else. So for example, if I played this three, this can be beaten by any single card that's higher than a three, or it can be beaten by a set of cards that is more than one card. Or let's have a better example here. Let's say I play this uh, 15. This 15 can be beaten by, well, not any higher card because 15 is high, but it could be beaten by any pair of cards if I happen to have a pair. So any pair of cards could beat this if I search through and I find a pair of cards like these pair of eights. These pair of eights is higher than that 15. And so this can be beaten by any higher pair or any three of a kind. A three of a kind would be, you know, three twos, which would beat these two eights. And so it kind of changes up the dynamic of things so that you're not simply looking at the cards in your, ha in your hand, but the best way to use those cards in order to beat the tricks that are currently going on. So in the same way, it's going to be the first player to go out in this manner, and the first player is going to get the bonus cards, uh, and so forth and so on. Now the same is true for runs. If I had played uh, a run of 11-12, this run of 11-12 can be beaten by a run of 12-13 or higher or any three card run. So you'll see here it's trying to figure out how to best use the cards in your hand to beat the combinations as they come out onto the table. It's a little bit more dynamic than these static uh, cards that you have in your hand and the way you can shift things up by using wild cards and the increasing climbing mechanic used in crazy clubs makes it a little bit more interesting. But either way, the first player to get to 50 points in either of these two uh, variations of the game clubs will be the winner. Well, there you have it. That is Clubs by North Star Game. Plays anywhere from two to six players, which is a great range. Now, this is a great introduction to the climbing card game genre, or even to trick-taking. If you haven't done too many trick-takings, Clubs is going to be a great introduction to that, and especially into the climbing card game genre uh, that's been dominated by Tichu, uh, and more recently, Haggis, which is a two to three player version. Uh, now, this one, as I said, is a great introduction. It doesn't have some of the complex strategy that exists in some of these games that have been on the market for a longer time. But I think that's a real strong point for clubs in that it, it you know, provides a new jumping on point for players who maybe aren't ready for the deeper strategy of Tichu. Uh, now, if you are looking for something or you get started with clubs and you really love it and you're looking for something to take it even further, I would definitely suggest taking a look at Tichu. It adds uh, basically an element of um, some special cards and some betting, uh, kind of like the double or nothing you have in clubs, but with some special cards and some partnership play, uh, which is also possible with clubs. So you can do partnerships there too to get yourself introduced to that. If you're looking for a smaller player variant, there's something like Haggis, where it can play both two and three players and does so very well. Either way, if you're new to this genre, I would d definitely suggest taking a look at clubs first. I think it's a very good introduction uh, and one that will certainly help you get more addicted to the other games that are in this genre and hopefully move you into a wider range of play with some very interesting games. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.